Once upon a time there lived a couple who loved to dine at Disney. The pair would share their thoughts on the fair as they wandered the world of whimsy. They sampled from restaurants and stands and quick service of all sorts, as well as cafes and castles and resort basement food courts. Occasionally they'd have meals with characters from films, some delightful, others frightful, but most left them quite full. Today's tale takes us into the wilderness for enchanted fine dining, where the couple meets a princess, a queen, and men who whistle while mining. The themed eats and meet and greets were tried twice for good measure, with a friend joining for one sitting, all partaken in leisurely pleasure. The couple of this story supper are Brian and Heather, two lovebirds in a land living there happily ever. Their channel so fanciful it's seeking the magical, they hope you subscribe, it's certainly practical. Today they'll review storybook dining at Artist Point. We hear that Snow White and friends like to hang at this joint. The table for our couple's storybook dining report is at the Wilderness Lodge, a Bay Lake Disney World resort. With one Disney dining credit, the two did receive three prefix starters and four desserts themed. Finally, they chose entrees from five on the menu, then sat back and chit-chat and took in the venue. After ordering their meal, why who should appear? Snow White, Grumpy and Dopey, and the Queen with a sneer. Snow and the dwarves promenaded the floor, wandering from table to table making the meal a fun new ordeal and bringing you into the fable. And they were told when they finished to be sure to see the queen. She may exude pure evil, but she certainly isn't mean. The guests thought, the character dining here is simply the best, full of silly songs and photo bombs. It's organized, hashtag blessed. So if you're in the mood for good food and a character dance party presentation, here they combine in a sublime story time celebration. While the cast is a blast, the seats, they don't last. Act fast with your advanced dining reservation. Of the heroes and highlights, they experienced those fine nights. It seems quite right to begin with the theming found through the decor and abundant in each bite. The room was strewn with a lush tree branch canopy and dim black square lanterns. It is a fun forest panoply for chance fairy tale encounters. There's a tiny dance floor for children to twirl, boogie, and bop, where they can join Snow White, Grumpy, and Dopey for a yodel song hop. In the corner, a great 10-foot book stood open to all in the hall. From its pages, the queen paced impatient, her mirror mirror on the wall. On the table, there was a three-leaf stand where the appetizers and desserts were served. There was theme on that platter, some dishes fervent with glamour, but a claim not all of them deserved. Each menu item's name more expressive than a hip-hop rapper. Poison apple, hunter's pie, and bashful's butter poach snapper. And the bartenders brews, some alcoholic, others not, are a slush fund of puns, evil to the core, that's rot. Speaking of, that's a spicy 21 and over twist to a tequila sunset that one guest confessed is a tasty sure bet. And for those who chose the transformation potion, you'll certainly be most impressed. When these colors combine, they may blow your mind. They serve magic on request. Now, the chef was a hero, a slick kitchen caballero, who healed the knight's aches he brought stress down to zero. You see the oil he used in most of his desserts and dishes, one guest was intolerant, risking character dining wishes. Before it hit the fan, into action the kitchen king flew. Set into motion his plan, he told the guest just what he'd do. I'm going to whip up some chicken, leave your blinking finger licking, yeah, your stomach is safe. Honest, this is kitchen licking with a taste that will thrill. You won't get ill, have your fill. Chill and fill up your grill as I kill it with my skillet skills. Woo! Because I'm able to table a fable of flavor. The oil won't spoil the foul you'll savor. I'll take a stretch, make it, saute it, demi-glitter. I'm on a food sonnet. You want to get here. The child will mess with me. I got the answer to the test, you see. You're going to get the best from me. So do fresh with the side of destiny. The chef then returned to the kitchen from which he came, and a short while after, they received their appetizers, similar but not the same. The apps were presented on the pedestal with three leaves, whereupon a bisque, a meat pie, and shrimp were positioned to please. Because of her allergy, not one fish nor two fish, not shellfish nor bluefish, only a few fish with her dish did Heather wish to see, the bliss of a dwarfish smile and his unselfish glee. For Brian, the Wicked Shrimp Cocktail was good, though nothing outrageous. He preferred the Hunter's Meat Pie, firm crust, tasty and gorgeous. Why they changed this to the Hunter's Tureen, we may never know. But the change wasn't so great, the outcome only so-so. And the best appetizer for this meal was the Winter Squash Bisque, 
served in a tiny black cauldron, marshmallow spoon for a whisk. Sadly, the squash was dropped and swapped for a crispy mushroom creation. While still rich with flavor and something to savor, an overall weaker conglomeration. The guests wrapped up their sampling of the opening palette pleasers, ready to move on to get their tooth on the menu's main features. First one standing on the menu, the other the chef's special fixin'. Here are both perspectives on the Brothers Grimm Roasted Chicken. Each bird was flavorful and moist, a fine sear sealed succulents in. The potatoes were the tops, now the bite was the flop, and the Brussels sprouts where to begin? Both preparations were excellent, and certainly better than most poultry in the parks. If you're craving chicken, flying fish is better, but the price here hits all the right marks. Another mighty fine meal is the Magic Mirror Slow Braised Pork Shank. The tender meat let go of the bone and had a taste you could take to the bank. Served with jus, winter greens, and a great side of celery root and potatoes mashed, this dish was a hit, though a little short of a smash. Just like any good story, a grand meal needs a pleasant ending, and our guest waited patient for the dessert the kitchen was sending. A trio of tiny temptations again apt in their theme. Two were pretty tasty, the other had a nice sheen. The poison apple was not poison nor an apple and barely contained the fruit, but this slightly sour white chocolate apple mousse was a good bite and just adorable to boot. With a little hat and tiny gems and buttercream layers in between, the miner's treasure was a cup of cake worth digging in my dreams. Sadly, the frosting was switched to a berry panna cotta. Still really good, but not as good as it oughta. The fairy tale gooseberry pie is a fairly passable petite pastry. Yes, it's precious to see, it didn't bring them any glee, a throw in that felt a bit hasty. Oh, yes, that's right, one last sweet in the meal's twilight. The hunter's gift to the queen is a fun light eat that is done quite neat with a smoky grand reveal. It's truly an untrite treat. Inside the box, beyond the mist, rests a red heart of dark chocolate you best not resist. It's a mighty fine ganache that beats many, they insist, adorned with maple-flavored popcorn. It's truly your good night kiss. While Snow White and the dwarves danced round and round, not everything in the restaurant was merry. There were some problems with food, and a wait hurt the mood more than a queen would find it contrary. One time the guests arrived for their reservation with a cushion. Forty minutes plus passed by at the end of the night it was a pushin. Brian quipped to Heather while twiddling his thumbs. We've been waiting quite a while. What I give for a crumb. As she watched the next table enter, Heather said feeling glum. This is taking forever. Perhaps someday our prince will come. The wait would have been easier to partake in had all the tables been taken. But be not mistaken, many chairs sat unclaimed, the guests seemingly forsaken. However, after they were seated, the meal mostly succeeded, receiving greetings from snow and little men. They enjoyed apt appetizers that fit the room's tall tale attire, all inspired as if put down in pen. And then came the entrees, each prim and proper on their plate. But not more than a bite or two in did eating plans abate. Their server said the queen's night would end, so amend the schedule they must. Cause it would be such a travesty not to make merry with her majesty, otherwise fearing apples could turn them to dust. At Artist Point, the proper way to comport in the matriarch's court is to embark to see the monarch at the meal's conclusion. However, since they had a late start, the queen would soon disembark. From fresh entrees, they left with abstrusion. And while they paid respects to the crown, the food's temp cooled down, and they found it lukewarm with a frown. Although not a faux pas, the royal prime rib was subpar, lacking flavor and not entirely tender. As for the rest of the plate, the potatoes weren't great, though the carrots were a surprisingly fine splendor. One more thing should be said before putting the villains to bed is that the changes to the original menu weren't keen. The squash bisque was just better, and the treen made one of them shudder. It's going from Alton Brown down to Jimmy Dean. The moral of the story for storybook dining is it rides high as thy finest character dining. No lie, your time will fly by while you hi-ho, high-five, two spry small fries. But Snow's time is nigh. Just look at the evil queen's stink eye. With a dining room set with forest folklore-themed features, guests might guess it spruced up by furry woodland creatures. And between the two trips was a tale of two servers, one gracious and attentive, the other lacking in fervor. The sedulous server delivered more than hors d'oeuvres during the second story time dining session, but also a relaxed pace and no attention to detail displaced, leaving the guests with a much finer impression. Considering that the characters in this tale were very responsive, providing playful interactions with guests, and the food was pretty good with several highlights for the price, it's near Disney World's best. 
So if, by happenstance, you fancy a chance to take an aroma's romance and a diminutive silly dance, then storybook dining just might be for you. The couple found it tasty and alive, out of 10, an 8.5, a great place for 12 guests or two. And Brian and Heather, they withdrew, left a tip and said adieu to the restaurant wrapped in rhapsody and laughter. In love described as classical, they're off seeking the magical, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs>